Hello everybody, welcome back to Scrappy Adam and welcome back to 30 Days of Sketches with Christy from Christy's Beautiful Life and today's sketch which has come from Jessica Fen Hill for day 9 and it is this one here. This one I toyed with various ideas. I went on a hunt for some pattern paper that might be suitable. I thought we could do lots of layers um, torn paper, different elements like that, because we've got lots of sort of torn elements or areas, shall we say, but we've also got lots of mixed media, or what could be mixed media. So, I decided, which I may regret, but we're going to get a little bit messy with some mixed media for this one. Now, I pulled out a whole bunch of supplies. I'm not going to use them all. I know I'm not. But I wanted choices. Didn't know what I wanted to do. And we're just going to play it by ear and see where we go, to be honest. It might end up a horrific mess, in which case you probably won't see this video. Or it might end up a bit of a mess, and I'll just leave it because the good, the bad, and the ugly occurs right here. Or it could turn out to be something amazing. Let's find out. So, this is the sketch, and as I say, it's from Jessica Fen Hill, and we're going to stick relatively close to it. I am using photos from Disney, and it is from the Epcot Flower and Garden Festival. So, we've got the Topiaries, we've got Kermit and Miss Piggy, and another Kermit and another Miss Piggy. So, what I thought is we'll cut these photos down. I'll probably have this one, uh, no, sorry. Probably have this one as the main photo, I think. Either that one of Kermit or that one of Piggy. And then we'll cut the other ones down. So we'll stick to that layout. And then we'll have a title. There won't be a whole bunch of embellishments, but there will be some. I just don't know what yet. I have pulled in some embellishments into the page kit. So let's have a look at that first. So we've got a couple of journaling pieces. One from... Paige Evans, one from Chamel, and we've also got an ampersand, a floral one from Truly Grateful, one of my favourite collections, and we've got Miss Piggy, spelled out in thickers, and we've got Kermit on the back, so that will be our title, Miss Piggy and Kermit, or Kermit and Miss Piggy, depends which way we go about it. And then we've got some stickers. These are all from Chamel, various collections. We've got Never Grow Up, Box of Crayons, Starshine, whatever that one was, which I can't remember. Um, and yeah, that, that, that's pretty much it for embellishments. In terms of mixed media, I'm going to put these to one side with the photos because we're a long way off needing anything like that. We're starting with a blank piece of paper. Literally, it's just a 12 by 12 white cardstock. And as I say, let's see where we end up. So, in terms of mixed media supplies, I've got Vicky Butin watercolours. We've got some of this mesh netting thing. I'm not sure what you call it, really. And we've also got one in white, just to add some texture, etc. Got a Brea paintbrush, some packaging, an acrylic block, some, what do you call it, what is it, bubble wrap, couldn't think what it was called then, uh, a palette knife, <clears throat> we've got some Spiegel Mom scraps sequins, we've got the mermaid fiesta, they're quite old, but I love the colours in these and it matches reasonably well, we've got the pinks and the blues, no greens but that's fine. Sequins are for Miss Piggy, not Kermit. I have also just pulled in the whole pile of 49 and Market film strips. We may, we may not bring one of them in. I don't know yet. And then the same for 49 and Market rub-ons. I've just pulled in the whole pile of rub-ons that I've got, which are the ones that I am showing you now as I flip through. So we've got lots of choices. Now, one of the photos has some musical elements, so I did think this one might work. But we've got all the text blends that they released, and then we've got some collection-specific ones as well. 
Again, may or may not use them. More likely to use them than the film strips, I think. But we'll see. I'm going to put them to the side, just so we've not got the reflection. We've got a few Distress Oxide inks to choose from. We've got Kitsch Flamingo, Mowed Lawn, Peacock Feathers, Villainous Potion, Gathered Twigs, Black Suit, Uncharted Mariner, Evergreen Bow, and Cracked Pistachio. Don't know which ones we'll use. I might have to get some other ones or change some up. I don't know. We'll see how we get on. And then finally, we have got some stamps. So just quickly, we've got the Art by Marlene Exclusive Textures, my favourite stamp set. Tim Holtz Stampers Anonymous. This is the ultimate grunge. Then we've got an All and Create. That's number 372 and 383. These are just like builders build it up, get some texture going. And then we've got some, the crafty, be crafty art stamps. So we've got the coffee stains, which comes with a whole host of coffee rings and randomly some numbers. We have got the, not sure what that one's called, but it's got film strip and this bit and some circles. And then we have got a woodware craft collection. This is, do, do, do. I don't know that one um, and then we've got three visible image stamp sets we have got the universal which is the circles the grunge tones and the imperfection is beauty sets which has some flowers so that is what I have pulled out not really sure where to start but we'll give it a try Probably going to do some packaging technique and I'll probably get some acrylic paint and I was thinking we could use the bubble wrap to sort of get some paint on f with acrylic paint maybe or something like that. I am also just going to grab a couple of stencils and maybe a Vicky Butin texture paste and we're just going to have loads of messy fun. I've also got all my sprays right in front of me here which you can't see at the moment, but got Heidi Swap, Colour Shine, Shimmers, loads of them, Dilutions, Distress Spray Stains, Dina Wakely Gloss Sprays, so we can bring in some sprays as well. I think the starting point is going to be creating a background basic, so just the basic colour, and I think we'll probably sort of have maybe three colours for that. And then building up layers. So we're going to have three distinct areas. But we're still going to have detail in all of the others as well. So let me just grab some stencils. And then let's just see where it goes. I think that's the key with mixed media. And why I don't do it so much. A, because I am a bit lazy when it comes to scrapbooking sometimes. I have to be in the mood to get messy. Um... Plus, I'm not a huge fan of mess, if I'm honest. Especially at the minute, because the scrappy room in the office is very tidy, awaiting the craft room tour filming. Um, but I decided this was a fantastic layout to just go for it. And I think that's the key, isn't it? It's just starting and just build from there. Just do what you think might work. There's no right or wrong way with mixed media, which is what I think we all need to remember. We've also got the watercolours as well. I need to remember that. So we might use that instead of acrylic. I don't know. Let me get stencils and let's get cracking. So I've just pulled out a bit of a random selection of stencils. Let me just show you what we have got. We've got this A4 stencil from Carabel Studio. This is the... For the love of layers and there is so many different parts to this i love this stencil it's one of my favorites we've got like hearts and dots and arrows and triangles and rainbows and crosses and circles all sorts it's a4 as well we've got this chow bella bad girl stencil which is the um concentric love that 
we've got the Carabelle Studio Hexagon pattern, which for some reason I've got two of these. Not sure why, but hey. We've got a Vicky Bootin Sweet Rush stencil, which is just polka dots. We've got this stencil, I'm not sure where that's from, but it's lots of layers and splatters. And then a couple of the Vicky Bootin exclusive stencils, which you can get from vickybootin.com. And they are, hmm, the backings don't go with it, but we've got the art layers and then we've got these circles, which also has like little rainbow pieces with squiggles in them as well. So I thought they were great for layers and things like that. So they are the stencil choices. Because I've got about 300 stencils, it seems, now that I've sorted them out. Which is too many. But, you know, Scrap a Sketch, Vicky Bootin, and everywhere else, there are so many choices. How can one say no? Right, I'm going to get the paper. Let's get cracking. I've also pulled in just three acrylic paints. Now, I've only got cheap acrylic paint. I don't do mixed media enough to warrant spending anything else really but we've got those that we can if we so wish pull in as well as well as some vicky in texture paste we've got a couple of the metallics with spearmint and bubblegum sort of like a pinky and a green and a couple of the others we've got kiwi sour which is one of the neons and blue hawaiian which is one of the others non neon <laughs> um and as i say we have got sprays if we want so i should probably stop pulling random stuff and actually do something so we have got our paper i'm just going to push these up there so you won't be able to see them all for a moment but i want you to see what we're actually doing or attempting to do so first things first, where shall we begin? So I've just got a couple of A4 plastic wallets. These are just older ones, and I'm just gonna use them to put whatever medium I am going to use on there, just to keep everything a little bit tidy-ish, if we can. And I think what we might do to start is get a bit of this texture paste going, which I haven't really used for quite a while. I, like I say, I'm not a mixed media person. So I should probably have just chosen a pattern paper that was going to work. But if you want a mixed media video by a non mixed media person, then you're in the right place. So we've got the texture paste and I'm just going to take a little bit, literally like, that's probably too much actually, half of that. And we're just going to pop it on here. Let's try and move things along so you can see what I'm doing. So yeah, we're just going to pop that on here. And then I am going to, what am I going to do? Get a little bit of our bubble wrap packaging. I'm just going to cut a little strip because there's no point in wasting. And I am just going to pop that in there. And we're just going to come in. Starting is always the hardest part, isn't it? So we're just going to come in like this. And I'm going to do a little bit down here. Like I say, very, very lightly. And I'm going to do a bit here. Like so. Turn this around a bit. I love the sort of metallic shimmer it gives. It is really, really nice. And finally, a little bit up here. So we've got our three distinct sort of mixed media areas. Now I will come further away from that area but that's sort of our starting point so that is the start of it now <clears throat> excuse me if you were doing a layout that you needed these sort of areas that is perfect mixed media for a base of a layout 
it doesn't have to be anything complicated and literally all I have done is add some texture paste onto some bubble wrap and blodged it on so I've not done anything spectacular at all so it, it does go to show I suppose that it is quite easy I think the trick is just having the confidence to have a go which I don't always have admittedly and I'm just going to use wipes just to wipe off the excess off there now I do have some palette knives, metal ones, and I've also got the Vicky Putin ones. This is just the first one that I picked up. These are just cheap from, I think, The Works, which is a craft store in the UK. Craft store of sorts, craft and stationery and books. They don't do an awful lot. So yeah, they're just cheap ones. You don't need anything expensive, that's for sure. So that is our first thing and that is spearmint metallic texture paste <coughs> excuse me now atop of that what i think we might do is add a little bit of packaging technique and what i'm going to use for that is distress oxide in mode lawn so for this i am running out of room this is not good news let's move that up there can you still see what I'm doing? Yes. Okay, so all I'm going to do for this is open it, <laughs> pop it on, here's the pad, looks like this might be running out a bit, I need to get a new one. But anyway, there's plenty there, I don't know if you can see it with the uh, lighting and the reflections, but we've got a little bit on there. I've then got a spray bottle and I'm just going to put a tiny bit of water on there and use our paintbrush to sort of mix that in I don't want it to be too watery um, so that is that's fine for me there we go I'm just trying to get the excess off there and then we've got our packaging this is literally packaging from a sheet of stickers so again, you don't need anything expensive. And all I'm going to do is lift up some of that ink onto there, like so, and come down in the same areas. We're going to come out a little bit. So now we're going to start spreading. Come back down and do some in this area. And finally in this area. Like so, and I'm just going to keep going round just until I've patted the sort of big wet areas. Now, I know a lot of people reuse their packaging, so they will wipe this off. Going back to what I said earlier, I am lazy, <laughs> and I will admit it. I'm not afraid to admit it. I think we can all be a bit lazy, can't we? Um, so I just throw it away, to be perfectly honest. And then I'm just going to use the excess that is on our brush to sort of add some splatters like that. Now, because we're going to be doing more, I'm just going to wipe this plastic wallet. Ordinarily, it would just go in the bin. And when we've finished whatever else we do, it probably will go in the bin. There we go. So that is the start, and we're still going strong on the um, layout. I've kind of gone a bit skew with, but that's fine. Next up, I think we're going to do a bit of stenciling. So first off, I'm going to use this Vicky Booten stencil, and I want to use this one and this one in particular. We may end up using another one as well. So for this, I'm going to use a blending brush. These are some of the bigger brand brending? blending brushes. And first off, I'm going to come up here. And we're going to use this one initially, I think. And you, I'm doing this sort of like real time, so to speak. I've not paused it since we started the mixed media portion. 
So I'm not necessarily waiting for things to dry. I'm not concerned too much about that because I'm patting it down enough to make sure that it's not soaking. We're going to start off with a bit of evergreen bow, 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 whatever. And um, we're just going to come in through the stencil. I'm putting different pressure just to get that different effect. So that is our initial stenciling there. If I could get the stencil up, there we go. So you can see that there. I also want to add one of them on this side, maybe about here. For this one, I want it to go off the page. So I'm just making sure I'm up against the plastic wallet. And same thing, we're just gonna go like this. Apply different pressure across different parts of it to get a different look. And there we go. And then finally, I'm going to do one about here. But for this one, I'm going to use this one down here. And we're going to come off the page ever so slightly. And just do that here. Now, it's overlapping with some of our other stuff, which is great. That's where our layers are going to start coming in. There we go, lift that up. And I will preface, preface, preface. Well, not preface, because we're 21 minutes into the video. But I will say, I am not claiming to be any kind of mixed media whiz here whatsoever. You guys know I am not. I am just having a bit of fun. And I love the way it's looking so far. So that is that. And now, let's continue with some stencils, I think. So next up, I'm going to bring in the concentric stencil from the Chow Bella Bad Girls collection. Um, for this one, I am going to use, let me see. Now, if we just grab our pictures, we've got some purple and pinks in the photos. And lots of green with a little bit of brown and blue. So... With all that said and done, I think we're going to get a little bit, not much, but a little bit of pink. This is Kitsch Flamingo. And for this one, I'm going to go here and just work our way out from the centre. I'm applying the most pressure in the centre and lightening the pressure as I go outward, like so, and that is there. And I'm gonna do another one of them down here, but on top of everything else that we've already done. There we go. So you can see it's just very lightly, you can't see it too much in on camera, but it is there. The other thing that doesn't put me off, but with mixed media, is I generally, I will do mixed media sometimes, like now, and then I'll love it, and then I'll build the layout and cover it all up, and I'm like, oh, well, that was a waste of time. So I think sometimes you've just got to think where, where you're going to place things. Now, I'm using the same brush, but I'm going to use Villainous Potion, which is the purple, and we're going to come back in those two areas and come out a little bit further. So we've got them overlapping. Same down here. And we're just gonna add just a teeny tiny bit up here, I think. So let me turn that around and just add that there. Like so. Love that. That is probably going to be enough purple for this layout. So I'm going to put that away. Just because I don't want the purple to overpower. I'm not using any patterned paper on this layout either. So bear that in mind. Okay. 
let's see what we want to do next. I really, 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 I was going to say use the hex screw, but no. Next up, we're going to use this, which is a dusty attic stencil, and it's DA1538 if you are interested. I don't know if you can still buy them. I can't even remember where I've got it from, to be honest. So, I'm going to focus on this area up here. Let me just move this out the way. So that's another habit I have. I end up covered in everything. So we're going to go there, and I think for this, we're going to bring in a bit of blue. One of my favourite Distress Oxide Blues is Peacock Feathers. And I am going to use the same brush as... No, I'm not. Because I want to add a bit more of that. So let's bring in another brush. And we're just going to add a little bit of this atop of our mixed media. And I'm not trying to get all of the stencil in. I am being quite vague with it. And you can see I've gone over the stencil there. That's fine. It's no biggie. And we're going to add a little bit down here. And a little bit here. So we're getting that repetition in all of our distinct areas of mixed media going. Okay, and then I think we'll add a final bit just up here. And I'm putting quite a lot of pressure there. So I really want that blue to pop up there. So you can see the different pressures I have placed around the layout. So I'm just going to leave that brush there. So we're adding more and more layers. You can see it is building up nicely. Our photos are going to be focused here. So you can see I'm not covering up the main mixed media area, which is a hallelujah moment. Now, I was going to say we've kind of gone off sketch, but we haven't actually. Okay. Next up... I think I'm going to add some stamping. So first off, I think, do, 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 I'm gonna add a couple of these. These is Impe Imperfection is Beauty stamp set from Visible Image. I love Visible Image stamps. They are amazing quality and the designs are always superb. And they are a British company. They do ship worldwide then. Okay, so new stamps, I'm just gonna rub it there because I'm lazy, can't be bothered getting the rubber. We are gonna do ink to stamp like so, and I'm not bothered about full coverage of the stamp. If it's distressed, if parts of it are missing, that is a-okay. And we're gonna add a stamp here. As you can see, it's quite bold. I am gonna add a stamp here, but not press as hard. And then we're gonna not, I'm just gonna re-ink like this. So I'm not gonna have as big an ink coverage, and we're gonna add one here. And then I'm not re-inking, and we're adding one there and one there. So for that I have used Uncharted Mariner and I'm just going to use a wipe to wipe off the excess ink, which I always do with my stamps. So I'm a bit of a clean phobe, like stuff like that, I can't just leave them dirty, I don't know. I know some people just let the ink build up, but some it stops me from doing that. Okay, so that is that stamp set. Now I think 
we're going to dive in to the Bee Crafty Polymer Stamp Set. I think this is another UK brand. It's a small company. I don't know if they're still going. Uh, designed by Beverly Tonks for Bee Crafty and manufactured in the UK. And as I said, it is the Coffee Stains set. So let's pull out this one, I think. And that's just going to go on my acrylic block. I've not used this one, actually. I've used the others, but not this one. So I'm just going to do that again. And I think for this one, I'm going to initially use a black suit just to get a bit of sort of a bold statement going with it. And I'm going to add that. I'm going to bring in our plastic wallet again, just to cover the edge, and then I'm going to go over the edge there, and just a little bit here, like so. Add a bit more ink, and we're going to add a couple up here. So one there, one there, and I am going to add one, but I'm just going to do it quite lightly there, and there. So that is quite a bold impact using the black. You can see that that has really sort of started to frame our layout very nicely. Just clean off that stamp. This is going to be a longer video naturally. And I'm just going to roll with it because I don't do mixed media often. And it's like mixed media for beginners by a beginner, isn't it, really? Who has no idea what he's doing. Okay. Then... Um, I really love this hexagon stamp and I know hexagons are kind of going against the rest of the layout but you know just roll with it so I am just gonna this is brand new as well this is one of their a7 stamps and it is number 383 if you like it as much as me so we're just gonna rub it because it's new do, 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 do. Try and get in all them nooks and crannies. Okay, so for this, I think I'm going to just bring in a little bit of that brown just to give us a bit of the earthiness because there are some brown elements in our photo so I'm just patting the ink onto the stamp I was always told that ink to stamp is the better way I don't know is that true who knows it's the way I do it mostly not always and then we're just gonna come down like so very lightly so what I've done is I've rolled it almost and then up here I'm gonna press but I haven't re-inked it so we get a different sort of vibe and then we will add a couple of areas using cracked pistachio I am NOT gonna wipe off the brown ink though controversial I know and then we're gonna put some of that down there and up here and then I'm just going to use the top of the stamp to get a bit of detail up there. Like so. Let's clean off that one. So let's bring in some rub-ons now. I have pulled out three from my pile of 49 and Market rub-ons. We've got the Defining Words from the Vintage Bits collection, I think. 
we have got the essential tax blends in sage and the essential tax blends in mariner marina mariner whatever you want to call it i'm going to start with the uh, defining words i'm not too bothered about what the words say on the back we have got all these black words which i'm not interested in for this layout i like this one down here it says capture I'm going to pop that here and we're just going to go over the mixed media and get some of that on, including some of the ink splotches area. Rub that on nice and firm and pull up. So you can see we've got another layer coming in there. I'm also going to use this one. It says enjoy and enjoyment. Again, not too bothered about what it actually says. Although, if it was a word that was like totally irrelevant, then maybe I wouldn't use that. But yeah, so we're just coming in with that one. Up there, and I want to add a little one up here, so let's use the memory. There we go. Pull that up. So that is them. Lots of texture and detail on this layout. Just look at that. I'm quite impressed with myself, I have to say. Then I'm going to add just a couple with the Essential Text Blends and Mariner. I just want a bit of a dark pop. Maybe down here. So let's pop that one there. go and this one here which I'm actually going to cut off because it's dangling off so we've got this one as well which we will overlap up here there we go love that so now to finish the mixed media portion, I'm not going to use the green one. Um, I feel like we need something else. So, what do we need? Where are the photos? Okay, I think we need... Oh, I don't know. What do we need, guys? Answers on a postcard, please. I think I'm going to use a bit of bright green texture paste. So let me just put the lids on some of these inks before we get our hands covered in ink. I'm just going to stack them there. We've not used the acrylic paint, that's fine. And we've got peacock feathers there as well. So what I think I might do is pop that there. And we've still got our plastic wallet, palette knife. This is one of the neon texture pastes. Don't know if I've used these at all before. I can't remember, to be honest. Oh, I have. There you go. So we're just going to use a little bit of this. Remember guys, your mixed media stuff doesn't last. It's not designed to last years and years. And I need to remember that and actually use the stuff. So what I'm doing with this is, I don't know if this is going to work, but that is very bright. <laughs> I'm spreading it out on this plastic wallet. There's still a bit of black ink there that's mixing in with it. That's fine. It just gives it a bit of a grungy dark feel which is perfect so I'm spreading it a very thin layer don't want it to be too thick right the way across there and then what I thought is what about if we try and stamp with it so I've got one of the rubber cling stamps from Stampers Anonymous and we're using this one here, oh, this one here. So we're gonna put that into there. 
and then we're just gonna come on like that look at that that is amazing actually so we're gonna add a few areas of that now you can decide you can either go quite flat on or you could go on and then sort of wiggle it a bit and get the messed up look so I'm just gonna add a little bit more tapping it very lightly and then I'm just gonna tap like this in the middle to get all the excess off because that's gonna be covered then clean off that stamp you have to scrub quite hard with that because it is texture paste so it gets in all the nooks and crannies I love the way that looks with the texture paste on the stamp and I'm sure that's not a new thing like it's, well it's not a new thing I've seen people do it but it's something I've never done before hence why I'm like oh that's amazing and you guys are probably like yeah we've seen like a million YouTube people do that and we do that all the time which is great but I haven't okay before we finish the mixed media part I feel like we need a bit more colour so I am going to clean off this neon green off the palette knife I'm gonna get rid of this plastic wallet I know there's still quite a lot of texture paste there but I don't need it I'm gonna bring in this one these are old I've got hundreds of them Excuse me, and then we're going to use the Sugared Strawberry Vicky Bootin Texture Paste now. I do have the gold and silver actually, maybe we needed a bit of bling, I don't know. And um, for this one, I'm going to use a stencil. So, I'm just going to use the Vicky Bootin Art Layers stencil and add just a little bit of detail with this. So down here, I'm just going to go through with this, like so. I'm not sticking the stencil down, so I'm just trying to be as careful as I can. But as you probably guessed, we're not going for a perfect finish. So we've just got a little bit of, uh, bit of it there. Down here, I'm going to add a few X's, plus signs, crosses, whatever you want to call them. And again, we're not going for perfection, guys. We are just going for a bit of a splash of colour. So I don't need them all to be completely filled or anything like that. I love the way that that just gives us a pop. I really, really love that. Gonna do the same over here. The green is still wet, so I need to be mindful of that. But hey, we're doing a Sandy now. I know she just does her mixed media and builds a layout on a wet mixed media, which why not? Okay, so that's there. I've got it all over me, I knew I would. And then I think we'll use a bit of this one just over here not much at all wow i've used quite a lot of this pink surprisingly and i'm just going to come in like so scrape as much excess off as i can let's use this one up there as well Trying not to go outside of the stencil, just because that drives me potty. So that is our mixed media. I think I'm going to leave it there, because otherwise it'll end up being more, is more, is more, is more, is more. And really, I'm pleased with that. It's messy, but that's the kind of the vibe we were going for. So I think we can say that as a result. Okay, so I have just let that dry for about 10-15 minutes or so and had a bit of a tidy up. 
I have kept the film strips out just in case. I'm not sure. I don't want to overload this layout. If we revert back to our sketch, I think I've stuck pretty close to it in terms of the mixed media whilst putting my own spin on it. And I am really pleased with it. I think the detail in it is brilliant. I don't know what you guys think, but I like it. I am happy with it. And we're going to go with it. Just going to refocus there. So, I have cut my photos. I've decided to keep this Miss Piggy one as a 6x4. Then we have another Miss Piggy sort of zoomed in. A Kermit. And another Kermit as a 3x3. I've got the embellishments, we've got the sequins, we've still got some of this meshy netting and I've also pulled in a frame. This is a chipboard frame from Simple Stories. This bit is irrelevant, however these bags do kind of go because in the photo there are these luggage cases next to Miss Piggy. Now I could be, you know, plain and boring and just sort of do it as a frame is intended, however what I think we might do is sort of do the frame something like this. So what I'm going to do, we're going to put a strip of adhesive here, which you can't see, <laughs> here. And we are going to put a pop of adhesive here. Like so. And then I'm going to tuck the photo in angle the photo and pop that like that so that is how i am going to have the photo sitting in the frame don't be afraid of using frames in non-traditional ways i love frames and we'll use them at every opportunity um but sometimes you don't want to use them as is what i like about this is we now have some of the mixed media peeking through inside the frame so what we're going to do first and foremost is I thought we could have this mesh layer in the middle just to give it a little bit of something. So I'm going to put a bit of adhesive there, there, there and there because that's roughly where our photos will be. And I'm simply going to give this a bit of a stretch and then pop that on our layout about there. Is that right? Yeah, about there. Like so. Some of that isn't quite dry. Impatient Adam. <coughs> and then what I'm going to do is put adhesive on our frame. So I'm just going to come around like so. Obviously, putting the adhesive on the chipboard frame as opposed to the photo, but then putting some on the photo as well. And this is going to go about here. And I'm going to focus on the frame being straight, not the photo. So that's going to sit there nicely. Now I'm probably going to have to go back with a bit of adhesive, let's do it now, just because it's not sticking very well. So let's put some Nouveau glue under there, like so, because it's trying to stick through the netting, mesh, whatever you want to call it, I don't know what it's really called, and I'm just going to squeeze some glue under there. So just leave that to dry for a moment. This is a very long video. If you have watched all of this video, you deserve a medal. But I don't have any. But thank you all the same. Now that glue has spread. That's okay because it will dry clear. Don't think I'm going to use any of this one. Not sure we need any. Oh, I've lost the lid. The lid has gone walkabout. Um, in fact, I'm just going to put a bit of Nouveau up along here. And we're going to add this white one on top there. 
and I'm just going to press that down. It's not going to stick very well till we stick the photos down. But that is okay. And let me just wash my hands. Oh no, actually, I can use this wipe. There we go. Okay, now we're going to stick these photos and I'm going to use Nuvo glue for this. So at the top, we've got Kermit. He's going to come in about here. Just hold that down for a moment. Put the tape on it, actually. Then we've got Miss Piggy. That's going to come atop of Kermit there. Like so. Let's have the scissors on Miss Piggy for a minute. <laughs> I'm going to have to press that down, actually. Do -do. That's the only problem when you use lots of sort of texture stuff. It is sometimes hard to get some things to stick, but they do stick eventually, especially with Nuvo glue. I say that, but that's just not for sticking at all. So I'm just going to load a bit more glue there. It's far too much glue, but it's fine. So let's just do that. So this is definitely being tricky with the glue. So I've put a ton under there. It's st stuck slightly, but what I'll do is once we've finished, I will put a bit more glue and then put something heavy on top and let it set. I kind of wish I'd have pushed those photos up a bit. Maybe I can do that while it's still wet sort of tucking in here a little bit there we go okay yeah happier with that so that is our finished design really now i'm not going to put an awful lot of embellishment i'm not going to lie our title should go here this on the sketch is a journaling point i've obviously used it as another photo so i do want a title and then we'll see if we're going to add anything else or not. So we've got this from a Chamel collection. It's sort of sequin glittery. And I'm going to pop that on our frame. Oops, frame. That says hello. Then we're going to use our thickers and spell out our title. So we have got Piggy. I am doing it backwards just because I wanted it to finish at a particular point. So to make sure that that happens, I start at the end, basically. So we've got Piggy and then Mrs. And I'm just sticking that atop of all of that gorgeous mixed media, which I'm not going to lie, for somebody that doesn't do mixed media, I think I've done pretty well. Just saying. Then we have our floral ampersand from Paige, which is actually a little bit big, so we're not using that. What I will do is hunt out another one. We've got Kermit in Amy Tan thickers here, and I'm going to start that about here. So we've got that down here. So our title will, of course, therefore be Hello, Mrs. Piggy and Kermit. That needs to come down a little bit. There we go. And I think just to tie in with the black rings that we've put, let me grab a black ampersand. We've got a perfect black floral one from Jen Hadfield. That is going to go there. So now we're left with these embellishments and I don't feel like adding an awful lot. We may add a couple of sequins to finish us off at the end. I don't need these journaling pieces because we don't really have anywhere for them to go anyway. So that's done. I am going to add a couple of these chipboard chamel florals just to tie in the fact that it's the floral the floral, the flower and garden festival. 
So we're going to have one here and one here. It'll also help stick those blooming photos down. And let's see. So we've got this sticker, which is a bird. Nope. We do also have the rainbow, which I would have liked to have used. Maybe we could use that up here. Quite like that up there, just to add a bit of a splash of colour. And then to finish us off, I'm just going to dot these florals around the page. So we've got a red and a yellow and the blue down here. Placed similarly to how I would place um, like enamel dots. We've got a blue and a pink there. And then here I'm going to put a pink and a yellow. And I do have some puffy hearts which I am going to again sprinkle in to finish this layout off guys. I'm, I'm pleased with this. It has turned out a lot different than what I thought. It is very busy. I shall give you that. It's certainly not a minimal layout like I thought it might be. But I do like it. Now I do need something to cover this because that is not what I want the title to be. That's not going to be big enough. So let me see if I can find a floral in one of my fang dangled floral drawers. Let's see what might work. What about this one? Yep, yeah, I like that one. I think that's a rosy studio piece. So I'm just going to simply stick that over the top there like so. And in the centre of that, we're going to put a wood button for no other reason than why not, basically. Um, now, in terms of our sequin quest, I don't know. Shall we add a couple? Let's add just a couple. So we've got one down here. I'm going to add one to the centre of that flower, which you're not going to see on camera, but that's fine. Um, and this one. Uh, I do have a pickup tool, but I'm just using my finger. So I've added a couple to the centre of those flowers, and I'm just going to add a couple of the bigger blue ones around the layout. Like so. Now, as I say, I am going to have to leave this layout under a heavy book or something. To try and stick the blooming pictures down so they're not for sticking. I thought Nuvo would have stuck it with all of the uh, stuff. It may also be because I haven't waited for the paint to be completely dry and stuff. So we've got a couple of sequins around and about. That just adds yet another texture, another dimension, another feel to the layout, which I love. And that is going to do it for this layout, I think. I don't feel like we need to add an awful lot more. It is very busy, I grant you. But... There is no patterned paper on this layout, which is quite impressive for me. And there are four photos, which again, is pretty impressive. And a ton of mixed media, which we haven't covered an awful lot of, which is great. And there isn't really an awful lot of embellishment, to be fair. It's just because the mixed media is there. But I hope you guys like it, and I hope it shows you can just play just start and have a play. I am no mixed media expert whatsoever, but I've certainly, <clears throat> excuse me, I've certainly had fun spending an hour with you guys doing this layout. I am sure nobody is going to watch this video from start to finish, but I like I say, if you have, well done, thank you. Your medal is in the post. I really appreciate it. 
I will be back tomorrow. Tomorrow is a super duper simple sketch, so I'm sure it will be a, a much quicker video. So I look forward to seeing you then. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day. Bye for now.